Hello everybody, welcome to the class today. I'm Nolan Clark and in this class we're going to be continuing our Kingfisher project. In the previous class we added texture to the canvas. In this class we'll be painting the actual Kingfisher in acrylic. So follow along as I show you step by step how to do that. Alrighty. So this is the image that we're going to be painting today. If you're a patron, you can go and download this along with all the all the reference materials. There's the the image, there's a gridded reference, and there's a sketch template as well. So if you didn't see the previous class, it is here. You can uh, go and take a look at that. So what we've done is so far we've built up the Kingfisher using texture paste. So at this stage, it's been a good two weeks. We've let him dry out properly and he's, he's well hard. I don't know if you can hear that. He is as hard as a rock. He's not going anywhere. So the first thing that we're going to do is just, we, we worked in some texture as much as we could. Um, but I want to show you that you can work into it after it's dry as well to add extra details to it. So let's just go to here and you can use either a you can use a, a multitude of tools. My favorite one is a craft knife or a needle. So what I've done is I've actually taken a needle and I've put it inside a mechanical pencil. So there's a little needle inside over there. And then what I'll often do is, because you can't always see these marks being all monotone at the moment, what I do is I, I take my phone and then I just put it on, on the torch function. And you can hold it to the side like that. Then you can see these, uh, these marks quite nicely. So what I want to do is just add a few little finer details in here that we didn't quite get in last week. Because when it's wet, it, it doesn't always shape as nice. It tends to sort of round itself out again, all these little marks. So I'm going to add just a few little extra deeper scratches in here. Just to really accentuate this detail. So you do have to make it reasonably deep because otherwise what happens is your, your paint just folds it in. And like here, we did work out some nice deep um, textures. Let's do it like that. Work out some nice deep, deep textures there, but I want to do is just fade it inwards in here. So I'm adding a few little narrower scratches in there like that. So you've got smooth, intermediate, and deep scratches like that. And then as you do, just get a, a brush and just go into those grooves and just get rid of all the little the little crumbs that do now come off because you don't want to have that in the final painting at the end of the day. The same over here in, in this little area there. We've got quite a bit of hair. And I'm just going to use the, the knife and you can see these hairs sort of crisscross each other. So now with the, the texture being dry, you just have more control over it. So 
So I'm just adding like almost like a bit of cross hatching in this vicinity over here. So sorry, I know my you have to hold the knife quite upright, so my hand's probably in the way, but if I take it away. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit further on that. There you go. Can you see there? All this extra little details that I've added in over there now. So we're going again from smooth, intermediate, to really rough over there. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty cool. Let's go back out. In actual fact, I think we'll go all the way out for now. Because now what we need to do is we'll we'll start the painting. I think we've got all the texture that I need. I just wanted a little bit more texture in this face area over here because that's your that's your focal point. So let's zip back out to there. And I'll just take a a brush. Just get rid of any crumbs. You can see there's a there's a fair amount of crumbs. I'll see if I can get it onto my hand and you'll see. That have now come off with this scraping. You see there. You don't want those little crumbs rolling around in your paint while you're trying to paint this guy. Yeah, there we go. Alrighty, so I think our first mission now would be just to get some some colors mixed. Let's head over to the palette. So I'm painting an acrylic today, so that's nice. We can dry things off that when we're done with them. So we'll start with the background, and we'll get that dry. It's quite a a grey, gloomy day when this photo was taken, and I quite like that. It gives you a nice, really basic, flat, boring background. So nothing is competing with the Kingfisher. So let's see. We'll put on some. Titanium white over there. And it's it's literally quite grey. So I think let's start off by putting down some some panes grey. Probably don't need too much, just a pea size. We will need a fair amount of white. So I think I need to be a little bit more a little bit more generous. I do need to cover a whole 12 by 16 inch canvas there. Let's do that. <laughs> we don't want to run out of paint halfway through. And let's just get a little bit, just a tiny amount of Payne's Grey in there. What I like about the Payne's Grey, it's, it's a blue black. And on a grey gloomy day, you do still have that, some of the blue from the sky inside those grey clouds. So the uh, the paint's grey gives you a nice natural gloomy day colour. Gloomy day grey. How's that for a rhyme? Alrighty. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll do it. The lighter version first. We'll cover the whole canvas and then we'll come back in with some with a bit of a bit of a misty effect. So we do need to cover cover quite a wide area. So I think I'll just uh, I'm going to soak up some some water into my dropper and work it in here. Let's get this reasonably watery. Let's see, probably about the consistency of cooking oil like a sunflower, a canola oil kind of consistency, maybe even a little bit thicker, eh? 
somewhere in between. Reasonably soft anyway. Let's get a nice big bristle brush. Even a Yeah, I think even a, a nice big hardware brush like this will do the trick. So now sadly, you, you can't really mask off your your kingfisher now because of the height. So we're just going to have to work carefully around it. So for now I'll get as close as I can with this big brush. And I'm just using a crisscross kind of motion. So I'm making sure that I'm getting into the canvas. So there's no little white dots of the, the canvas still shining through from in between the weave. Let's see. Uh, that side does seem to be a little bit lighter than the this side. And obviously I'm running out of paint. I, I didn't didn't mix enough, and that's fine. I'll, we'll do this side. That way, we know the paint won't dry on us as well. And it's not a thick coat of paint; it's just a a nice, thin, even coating. That'll do. Let's see, maybe we'll just overlay the the palette. I don't think we need to. I don't think I'll, I'll go zoomed in on that for now. Because I'm pretty much going to make the same color. Just this time. I'll add a bit more Payne's Grey to it. Oh yes, we haven't done those edges. If we don't do them now, we may end up running out of paint and then we haven't got the same color to, to match. So let's just grab a small, finer brush. So this is just a soft forward brush that I've got here. So you can go slightly over the lines, that's all right. It is acrylic, so all your pack, your colours are basically opaque. So I'm getting right in your in between all these little grooves and things of the texture paste. You want to get in underneath there so that this background of yours goes well behind. Yeah, we can stop over there, that's fine. That'll do. Alright, so let's now just get some more Payne's Grey into this. So that we have a darker version. Let's see, let's do one that's even darker. So what I'm doing is I am now comparing like here, where there's uh, some of the old color. So I can see that there's a difference between these guys. And then I'll just, I'll just take my 
roll of kitchen towel and just wipe off the excess that is now on the brush. Just like that. And I'm going to lightly blend this in. So I'm going to basically put some paint down like this. More or less there where I'm seeing it. On the reference. And I can blend it in with crisscrosses. But I think at in this stage the easiest way is actually just to use your finger. Because it's a very soft little misty smoky kind of effect. That we've got going here. Which is now getting darker to this vicinity. Let's maybe move these guys up now. Eh? Yeah, let's pop them down over there. So what happens is your, your finger is now automatically round. So that softens any, you don't get those sharp edges and lines that your, that your brush would give you. So there are one or two little crumbs still on the canvas, which I'm now, as I feel them, I'm just wiping them off. Let's get this a little bit out there as well. We want something to look like it's going in behind our, our bird. Yeah, let's just turf that, eh? It's just in the way. No matter where I go, it's, al it's always in the way. We'll just do our own thing. Get a little misty, smoky kind of effect happening here. And obviously, now the more, because you've got a, a base layer down, the more you work over this, the the lighter and the softer the effect that you're going to get. So I'm just using little wiggles and squiggles with my finger. Yeah, that'll do great. Awesome, let's take this guy. Okay, now we can bring our pictures back, eh? Hey. So let's take this guy. He's not quite so dark. I'm going to add some more white into it until he's roughly the same as the as that original color of ours. Get some water into him. Just so that he can go a bit further. Awesome. Let's wipe off that excess just to get rid of that dark color. And let's continue down this side. So as you paint and you do go over the the texture paste, it sometimes your your brush will now chip off little little crumbs. Don't panic about it; it's normal. Just brush them away as you go. Get that edging right. I'm getting right up. I'm touching the the texture paste, so I want to make sure it goes in below it. So there's no little white halos around this guy. All right, let's see. We have a little bit of a darker area over here. So we'll 
Network Vetting. There's some darker over here. So just stand back and make sure you don't have any any hard edges and lines and things. And then in those areas that uh, your fingers don't reach, like here, you'll just have to finish them off with a brush. So what I usually try and do is try and get something that's going behind the, the front object, so in this case the bird, and coming out on the other side. So for example, we've got this dark over here and I've extended him and made him come out on this side, like that. Yeah, that's cool. Alrighty, I think that was that was pretty easy enough. And quick enough. So I'm going to wash the big hardware brush. I think we're done with him. So the paint doesn't end up drying on him. So we'll get him out the way. And I'll wash the smaller brush as well. Seems like we're done with him. And then we can dry off this background, we're done with it, and then we don't have to worry about leaning over any wet paint. Fabulous. So as this is dried, look there, there's a little halo around the beak over there. So we're going to have to turf that. That we can't have. Because that's now, the background means, it means the background is going around the foreground object. And that's not what's happening. So I'm coming in here with some lighter, some of the lighter paint. I'm just breaking up that line. It doesn't have to be the whole line painted out, because then you may just end up painting a whole new line. <laughs> that would be pointless. So I'm just uh, just turfing that. Alrighty. So now we need to do some new colors again. Yes, I think let's go back to the palette. Maybe even we'll pop him in that corner then he's really fully out the way. So we now we know what Murphy's like. We're probably gonna paint over the, the background by accident at some point. So I'm not gonna turf these colours. I'm just going to take them, it's all the same same color. It's just a variety of the same color, so I can easily mix that again. So I think I'll just throw the whole lot on top of each other, throw them all together, and I'm going to put it on a nice big pile like that. And I'm going to spray it with some water.
that way it's not going to uh, it's not going to dry on me. Don't know where my my spray bottle disappeared, to, so I'll just drizzle some water on there. The rest here we can we can clean off. That's that's great. I think we're done with that. That'll give us now lots of space to get some nice bird colors going. So if you did miss past one, part one of building up the um, the texture, you can go and take a look. The, the video is here. Aha, I found my drop, my spray bottle. Dennis stole it. <laughs> there we go. Now I can spray that guy. Okay, so if I take a look at the, I think that if we go to the face and, and the chest area, that's probably about our our best sort of variety of, of colors in one place. So there I'm definitely seeing some brownie blacks. So we've got our Payne's Grey, but it does have a bit of a brownie tinge to it. So I think what we can do there is maybe put down some like burnt sienna. Just touches of that. You can possibly even use raw umber. That could also work. Or burnt umber. Anything just to add a bit of brown into that. And then inside the the brown in that chest area, I think that's mostly yellow ochre. But then it do does now darken up. And it's probably going to darken up with those burnt sienna kind of colors as well. So I'm going to put down a fair amount of, of yellow ochre because it is now a good portion of the body and it's on the face and stuff like that. And you can possibly even use touches of cadmium orange as well. But I, if I look at it, I think, yeah, those are more close to the colors that we've got. And then just under the, here in the, the throat area, there's that yellow. So that would be like a bit of a, a dull down cadmium yellow. So I think we should be able to take cadmium yellow and some Payne's grey or possibly even the, the burnt sienna as well just to dull him down. And then there's blue. There's, there's a really quite especially if you look there at the wing. It's like a green turquoisey kind of blue. So I think for now I'm going to take some Taylor blue. Let's go over here. And I'm going to put him down because he does have a bit of a turquoisey, emeraldy look to him. If you don't have that, I think the closest bet would probably be stick with some uh, French ultramarine. Maybe throw in a bit of a, maybe like a purple into it, like a dioxazine purple or something like that. And that should steer you in the right direction. Awesome. So that's what we've got for those colors. So instantly I'm going to just give them a spray so that they don't dry out on me. And let's do some mixing. I don't have much beak, so I'm going to just take a little bit over here. Bring in a little bit of that burnt sienna. And let's see, what does it, what does it give us? Is it giving that kind of a brownie tinge to it? Yes, it is. It's, I think that's pretty much a spot on color. So I'm happy about him. Next one that 
let's do that yellow from underneath the underneath there or by the chin or by the throat so we'll take that that's too bright so we'll definitely need some white so what I maybe I'll do is that white is going to discolor very quickly or maybe just use that tiny amount of yellow that's that's on there or that's already there and discolor the white with it just to see what does that yellow do white changes color so quickly and when you're working with a really light color it's better to start off with lots of white and then add color to it as you can see i'm already heading towards that tonal value just with that tiny amount of paint that was lying there so now we'll gradually start adding yellow to it so what i'm looking for now is roughly the tonal value which is probably heading in that di direction let's steal just a just a speck of uh, Payne's Grey. Let's chuck it in there and see what it does. It's dulling down the color, but it's definitely dulling it down too much. It's almost like it has a bit of uh, burnt sienna in it as well. So what, I'll, what we can even do is we can, if you've got lots of this, steal some of that. I haven't now mixed much of that, so I'm not going to do it. I'll just nick a bit of Paints grey and burnt sienna. Oh, paints grey and uh, yeah, burnt sienna, burnt sienna. Chuck them together. Hold it up to the screen. That looks great. It's definitely going to give us the colour. A little bit more burnt sienna in mine. So to check my colour, all I'm doing is just holding it up against the against the screen. In the correct place. Let's see if I can emulate that for you. So I'm holding it up like that against the screen, and then I'm, I'm checking that color to see if it's looking the same. Yeah, and I think for now it's pretty close. Pretty close. There are little variations in it which we can bring in on the canvas as we as we do our shadings. Yeah, for now I think I'm I think I'm happy with that. It's a it's a nice little dull yellow there. What's next? So we do the the brown next. All right, so let's start with the brown here on this little cheek area that seems to be the brightest that one it seems like it's some uh you know, very just need very little but i i think the some of the highlights on the feathers is this color too so that's fine let's do that and it's too bright so i'm going to bring in some yellow cadmium yellow and maybe just a touch of white let's see what happens Yeah, I think that's it. So it was yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, and white. So that was easy enough. Then here in front of the eye, this brown area, there's you got the the lighter one that we've just mixed, and then below it, there's like a almost like a burnt umber. So I'm going to take some. burnt sienna and some raw umber but there's more burnt sienna than raw umber as opposed to where the beak has more oh sorry burnt uh burnt sienna and pain's gray well, i'm thinking of raw umbers because it is basically a raw umber color if you had raw umber you could just use that so this this one is a bit more on the brown side where the other one is a bit more on the black side the beak so it's a variation there. And that looks quite similar to what we're seeing here in this chest area, that darker color. So let's take that and that. So that was burnt sienna with a bit of yellow ochre. 
and let's just dull him down a bit with a little bit of Payne's Gray. So he's not quite so bright. More. So I like to mix my colors here at the beginning. Then I've got all the colors sorted in one go. And I can just keep my palette watered. And then the, the paints won't dry out to me and I can work for days like this. But at least then I can sit and just paint. I don't have to stop mix colors, stop mix colors. I prefer working like that. For me, it just flows easier. I know a lot of other people prefer to just mix the colors as they go, even like all impromptu on the canvas or on the on the palette and on the canvas. All right, so let's take that and let's just spread him out a little bit. So he's quite, quite bright, eh? Let's maybe go to there. I think that's a, a good variety. Or a good overview of that color. So I think the first thing we need is, is that's missing is maybe just a bit of yellow inside that blue. So I'm going to add just a tiny touch of yellow. Not too much. Be careful that it doesn't become a green. That's why I say it's a, it's a, it's a very turquoise color, that. Yeah, I think just that tiny bit of... And now I think I'm going to also just... For the dark, I'm going to add just something to dirty it up. So maybe a bit of burnt sienna. Just a tiny touch. Let's see what happens. And that should take away that brightness of the color. Yeah, I think that's quite nice. That's that got us there quite, quite accurately. Awesome. Now for the lighter one, let's start off with some white. And let's just mix whatever's on the knife in there and see where we get. Maybe that gives us the color that we're looking for. Super close. Just a little bit more of the Taylor Blue just to get it a little bit more vibrant. I think that's that's as pretty much as good as we need. I don't see any other main colors there. That's about it. We do have for the um for the branch but i think the branch we can just tackle on its own that's still way down the line as well we don't want to get our paints drying on us okay let's go to there and let's paint ourselves a kingfisher Right, so this first part, I'm going to start by the beak and then we'll work our way back because I, I am now right-handed. So I'm going to start on the left and I'll work my way this way. So I think I'll just use a just a small soft full bit for that area over there. Let's see if I can bring up the palette fast as well. Yeah, I think I'll pop him down quite small. Because we've, just so that you can see where I'm picking up, but there should be no real surprises. So I'm picking up some of the beak color. And the darkest part on the beak is here at the bottom. So the easiest way to make sure that I don't go over the edge and into the background is just to use my, my painting knife as an impromptu little mask. Like that. Oh, 
Alright, so this whole bottom part here is, is in shadow. So I'm going to fill him in, just block him in solid with the, with the paint. So now you will find that the texture paste is quite thirsty. It will soak up more paint than what your, your, your gessoed canvas is going to. That's normal. So you just continue working in the in the paint. Into the texture paste until it gives you a nice even color. Alright, so now I've got over to just a, a fine liner. Because here we've got where the, the top and the bottom beak meet. So we've textured that. So we've got a nice little dip over there. But the sun still catches those two differently. So the bottom part of this little groove over here is in shadow. And the top part is in sunlight. So I'm using my just my little little fine liner to paint the bottom bit. And now for the top bit, we've got our sky color. We've still got a whole heap of that. So we're just going to take, and we only need a little bit. So I'm going to take just a little bit of sky color over here. And a little bit of big color over there and just bring these two guys into each other and I'm just roughly comparing the tonal value on the photograph that should be fine All right so we can water that down quite a bit now so that we can get a nice little thin line. So again, I think I'm going to use my knife for a mask because it's it's super thin little groove that so your chances of touching the top bit that you've now already painted is is, is pretty certain it's almost a given so instead of me having to try and not i'll just uh use a mask use the knife as a mask And all going well, if I lift him up carefully, we should have a dark and a light. With an emphasis on should, eh? Because it's such a super fine line. So there is a little bit that did leak, but that's fine. It's easy for me to, to fix that little bit up, as opposed to try and repaint this whole line here again. Yeah, I think I got that. It's all right. I'm happy with that. Okay, let's continue with the beak up over here. So this last little tip, there's there's no texture paste over here. I didn't work that all the way to the tip simply because I, I wasn't getting it any thinner. Okay, now we can carefully come up to the start of that ridge with this highlight color of the beak and as before I'm going to use the knife
as a mask. Cool, let's see, is this nostril over there? So it's putting that little line over there. And then this little dark widens up into that vicinity there. So if what you've done is just uh, running or whatever, we don't get it quite in the right in the in quite the right place. Just dry it off and do it again. Yeah, I think that beak's probably sharp enough there, eh? Alrighty, now I think I'm going to go over to a bit of a bigger brush, but still a, still a fine round because we're going to now paint this area over here. So as usual we start from the back and we work our way forward. Eh? So the back part in, in this case is the, the blue over here and then these brown overlap. The eye we can do almost at any time. So I think what we'll do is we'll do the blue to there. Then we'll do the eye. And then we'll uh, put all the others because it's easy to come here. But when we get inside that eye over there, we're probably going to start touching stuff. All right, so that top of that head over there is darker than this blue that we've mixed. So that's the first time when you come in and you start just doing a little impromptu mix because we only need a tiny touch of it. So I'm going to take my my Payne's Grey and bring in a little bit of that blue into there to ma make a really, really dark blue. Like a black blue. So I've just realized there is a way that we can mask off over here. We can use some masking tape. Because that's now round and our, our painting knife doesn't get there. Um, Dawn is asking if Dennis is doing any live classes. No, Dawn, uh, Dennis has now retired. He may be watching the class, but uh, he's he's happily just doing his thing now, doing doing things that uh, he doesn't have to worry about the money and stuff anymore. So I put it down and then I like give it a kink. Put it down, give it a kink. It's not perfect, but it's close. You can, however, still see plenty of Dennis's classes on the on the website. All his pre-recorded classes are now obviously still there, but he's not making any new classes. Alrighty, it's not, I um, haven't mastered off perfectly, but we do now still have some of our background color, which we can use to, to touch up 
at least it's going to allow me to to zip along faster. It's easy doing those tiny little touch-ups as opposed to huge touch-ups. Alrighty, so let's see. Over here we do need to now just uh, check we've got blue around here. Then we've got that other color. It was like a white color. And then we've got the orange. So we did do a little bit of a, a scratch around there for that orange. So I'm going up to that scratch that I made. And that should get us reasonably accurate. Okay, let's take a look. In this vicinity it goes around there. So now you'll see that you've got all this texture that you've built in and scratched in. So you're going to have to... jab and stab at it from different angles to get the the texture fully covered and fully worked in yeah i think while we add it we may as well work in this color over over here too it's the same color And like here, we lifted up that texture base. So I'm, I'm taking my brush and I'm stabbing in underneath that where we lifted this. This over here is lifted up. So there's a little bit of height there and I'm getting this in underneath that height. So that little edge that we did create for ourselves is, is, is now showing out, showing up. That jagged edge there. And I'm painting just a thin layer of paint. Remember, we want our, we don't want to fill in our texture. We want it to, to stand out. All right, so that's cool over there. So I'm going to wash the brush. And I'll just use some neat, neat paints gray. Let's bring some of it down to there. Just dip a little bit of water, my brush, in the water. Just so we can thin that off ever so slightly. Not much. And now we want to do this eye. So you're going to do it from all sorts of different angles. So I'll usually come at it from those outside. The, or what would you call it? Those inside bits over there. Try and get them filled in first. Then it's easy to do the outside bits. Yeah, let's see, we've got some of this brown in this vicinity here. And in that vicinity in there. Alrighty, let's take a little bit of sky color. And let's work in some, some highlight. Onto that eye over there. So that's just some sky color. Then I'm going to take some neat white. So there's a little bit of a shading there. A 
and we can lighten that area up and I'll pick up picking up a little bit of blue and just a tiny touch of blue into that so it's just a very quick little little shading Okay, so I think this here is probably mostly dry. You'll find it also dries. The paint dries reasonably fast on the on the texture paste because it it sinks in. So I'm going to take some of the the highlight blue. So it's reasonably warm here by me today. I can feel this is starting to get tacky already on the on the palette. So I'm giving my palette a good old mist. And that'll keep the that'll keep the paints wet. All right, so take a look. Let's go zoomed in over there, just so we can really get a good view of that. Maybe that's even better, eh? It's sort of these little marks, almost like in a bit of a rib defect. So I'm just gonna just tap like this. Tap, 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 and then come around. Is it identical to what we see on the on the photo? No, not really. But it's similar, and and that's good enough. Remember, each each bird their markings are different. So as long as you get something similar, you're a for away. Okay, so here it changes again. So here we've got markings that are coming more in this direction. They're still going around, just in a different direction. So I'm just tapping them in. A little higher. And then there's some highlights on that, so I'll just pick up a little bit of white, work it in there. So only need a few specks of that. And now you could even use a just a finer brush if you wanted to. Maybe I will do that, just for this area here. Tiny amount of water into the mix. And let's see, uh, right on the top of the head, there's a, th these bits are, are lighter. And then over here, yeah, some of them are lighter. We don't know, I can't tell if it's a specific place or if it's just random hairs. So I'm just going to do them random. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Yeah, kingfishes really are beautiful, aren't they? All right, so let's take a look over here. We've got some of this orangey color. I think while I've got the small brush, I'm going to stick with that because that's going to get me into these little grooves that we've scratched into here. And it's when you get to these grooved bits that... It the 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 way you paint is it changes. It's got to be a little bit different because you do now have to come at the at these grooves at different angles. And there, and then it goes lighter. So I'll just pick up some white. 
it's almost like a bit of a a gray so maybe bring in a bit of this burnt sienna kind of a kind of a color there as well just a little impromptu mix so we only need a tiny speck of it in here that vicinity That's fine over there. And now I'm taking some of these little browns that we mixed. Just to create a bit of a, a shading over there. specks of these highlight colors as well the same as what I used over there I'm just adding a few specks of them in right. this here just seems to be a bit more orange so I'm working a bit of that uh, burnt sienna in that vicinity over there Maybe even just some neat yellow ochre as well. Yeah, that's better. Alrighty, so around the eye, it's got that little white ring. So I'm just using the ridge that I've worked in over there, and I'm going to work that that little ring around the eye. Just by following that that ridge. Okay, let's go to the yellow ochre color. Let's get this in over here. So initially I'm just blocking it in. And you have to do it in a little bit of a scrubbing effect to get into your, your texture. And I'll go over to a, a smaller brush. And I'm just going into these little ridges that we worked in here. I'm just getting some of this into those ridges, some of the darker bits. So what is nice is that you can now um, get the paint into the ridge and then you can wipe it back off again. So then just the, the paint that's inside the ridge stays there. See, I'm picking up just touches of yellow. I can see it's getting lighter in this vicinity over here. So I'm just working in a little bit of neat yellow, but over the tops of those ridges, just so that it doesn't get too... Uh, it don't, you don't want it inside, just on the... 
you don't want to lose the detail on the inside. Okay, so I can see this color isn't quite as as vibrant as it needs to be. So I think I am going to introduce just a little bit of cadmium orange. But not on its own. I'll take some of that and just work it inside these yellows and things. So it becomes like an orangey yellow. Let's check it out and see if it's enough. That's better, right? That's definitely better. Just needed that touch of orange in there. So here where the orange and the blue meet, you've got all these little overlapping feathers. So what I do there is just, I pick up the paint so that my brush is like a chisel point. Can you see that? It's flat like that, but it's sharp like that. And that way you can just drag in some of these to overlap. The same on this side. And that way you've got some of the orange between the blue and some of the blue between the orange. Alrighty, let's mix that or uh, block in that piece behind the neck. So just use neat white. So it does initially seem like neat white. And then here as it comes down, it does now change color a little bit as it curls around. Okay, we're done with that. That can go over there. So that just sort of gets a little bit dirty. So I'm just going to pick up one of these browns that are over here. Just into the white, just to dirty that white up a little bit. Just add a few little quick little flicks and stripes. It's more, more like a shading than anything else. Oh, don't know if you saw the camera shaking there, we just had a little uh, earthquake. Wow. Alright, so now that we've taken that masking tape off, I'm just going to come in here and just add a few little flyaway hairs.
and that just adds interest to the edge there like that. Okay, let's add our little jagged effect over here. So as we come down here, they start becoming a little bit more like little patches. So I'm just keeping putting them in in those little patches and that'll give us that that hair effect. There like that and as it goes down here it, it gets darker and darker so I'm going to just wipe off the excess paint on my brush and just with a little bit that's left just add a something in there almost like just a shading because the texture curls in over there it's got it makes its own little automatic shadow and just for interest, now I'm going to pick up some of the really dark blue that we mixed up for over there. And I'm going to add just one or two little patches here in between on the dark areas. Don't overdo it, just a few. And that just adds a little bit of extra depth here and there in between these guys. Alright, so all I'm going to do now is just take a look and see where have I not quite got into the the texture. Make sure I've got everything. Where's a little white dot over there? Alrighty, I'm going to take some white and lighten up this yellowy orange color of ours. Give it a good contrast. And I just want to add a few extra little lighter guys over here. Especially on this back end, back bottom end over here. So you want to use a super light touch to not get into that texture. This must just go over onto the tops of the texture. little ring around the eye also just sort of as he dried it disappeared so I'm just working him back in there again a little bit lighter this time so that when he does dry he does uh, he won't disappear on us okay so I think that's sort of the worst of the fine detail work let's do this yellow area over here so i'm going to go over to a a soft full bit this time let's pick up some of that yellow let's get this whole area here blocked in 
So I think from here things should go a little bit quicker. So now as you do this, you need to go make sure you're scrubbing yourself nicely into that texture that you've scratched in there. So I don't know if you can see it because all the different lights that we have there in the studio trying to get us an even lighting. But can you see there? Look at all this lovely detail over there that's now in there. I'll show you again when the when the paint is dry and it's not shiny. In other words, you're seeing a lot more detail in in real life when you're looking at this than what you would see now here on the on the video. So as before, I'm creating myself just a mask over here because I don't want to paint into the blue so this knife is physically going in underneath the texture paste You have to now get all these different angles painted. All right, so we leave that to dry. while it does I think we'll we'll go to there And let's start blocking in this as well. So I think I'll use that to dark, the darker brown. This one over here. So let's work from dark to light. So as we come here, I'm making sure I get a nice sharp edge over there. So if you do go over the edge into your into your background, just come in with a wet or a damp brush and just gently push him back. So why am I coming in here with the dark first? It's because as I go, as I paint, I'm painting into the grooves. Sorry, I just want to get that to there while I speak. 
as you're painting now, you're painting into the grooves. So inside those grooves is always the shadows. So that's why you want to paint your, your shadow bits first. Because they're the ones that go into the grooves. I think you'll agree with me, it would look quite odd if you have highlights inside the, the shadow areas, inside the grooves. We have to now conform to the way nature does it. Stop over there because that's where the blue goes. Okay, let's see. Here we've got a bit of a, a shading going on, so I'll pick up some of this orangey color. And let's just blend the yellow into this orangey color here. I'll bring it slightly up into that whole chin area over there. And as I work these guys in, I wanted to create a bit of a, a stripey effect. I'm not quite into the grooves yet, so I'm just scrubbing away there. All right, so I'm going to grab some, just some white. I can see in this area here, just these little tips of these feathers have become white. And I think it's just their highlight color. I don't think they're physically changing color. So very lightly, I'm just dragging over here so that any color that I'm putting down now is, is on the tips of these grooves and stuff that we've scratched in there. And that way the, the darker bits are still shining through. Can you see there? Often you can even just rub over it again like that. It's very gentle. You know, if it's, if it's too... Um, too pronounced, what you've highlighted over here, just gently rub over it and it lifts some of it up, but it leaves, because your finger is now um, 
a f essentially a flat surface. It can't go into the grooves, so the grooves stay there, color. I'm taking white and just a little bit of cadmium yellow, just to get a very light cadmium yellow. And I'm going to just lighten up this area over here. In other words, just make it a little bit more intense yellow. And this is all over the tops. No, nothing on the, on the insides. No, no hard pressing. Okay, Virginia, welcome. So I think you can start to see you're getting a whole different type of of look than that you, what you used to. Just taking some of the the darker brown and adding it to this yellowy color, just to get a darker version of it. And I'm going to add it in here. So you're sort of adding not as much. You, or you're not painting quite as much texture as what you would normally have. You're letting your texture work that you've added in here do the work for you. Right, see here we do have quite a few gaps there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of the, that dark blue from this background over here. Just here and there, inside those little grooves, I'm pressing it in. Just into the groove, and that's making that edge a bit more jagged. And don't panic if you do get it over the on the highlighty bits, the top bits. Remember, you can just do that, <laughs> and it wobs straight off. And you can always come back in with some more, gently over the top like that. To bring out those highlights. Okay, let's go wider again. These are the highlights here. I've also just, they, they were nice and bright, but then they've darkened up as it's dried. So I'm just bringing that uh, gently over the top there again, just to lighten him up. Okay, let's work on this whole chest area over there. Yeah, so for that, I think let's take this this brown. So what I'm looking for here is, is the darkest color I can see. The darkest color I can see sort of is the, this brown ends around here. Then you get a new darkest color in that area. So that's going to have to change. And it's a color we haven't mixed yet. So that's fine. We'll leave that and that. And here again, I'm just double checking that I've got 
texture, all my texture covered in with this dark. Because after you start adding details over it, it's difficult to get into those textures again. All right, so let's see. Let's take our orangey color and let's start adding some of these highlights in here. So I'm just using just a dabbing, jabbing stunner kind of motion. And that'll create the impression of these different colors inside the feathers. So Gail is asking, how would you mount a 3D texture piece like this? Um, that's why we left this here. That bottom edge or the outside edge, we left that open. Because what happens is now you can take this and just frame it as normal. So I do find, because it's a nice texture and stuff, don't be shy. Give it a nice chunky frame. Because the, the the painting is bold. So you can be bold with the with a frame as well. It it works really well with these these guys. Yeah, so I'm just painting it yeah, at this stage this is all flat, so I'm painting as normal. I think I can bring in a bit. So I'm going to use literally some neat burnt sienna. And just in between, I'm going to bring in some of this burnt sienna. Just adding an extra texture into that. Let's go close up for a minute. Actually, I think let me let me let's go there. I want to just adjust the camera. Just so you can see more of the of the body. So just little dabs and stabs like this. What's happening is it's just adding extra little bits of interest and in different tonal values and so on. Okay, back to the orangey one. Let's continue down here. So over here again, I have to now start being careful so that I can come straight in against that blue but without actually touching it. And as I paint these texture paintings, I'll also keep looking at it from different angles. Because from where you're sitting now, you can't see all these little grooves and nooks and crannies inside the texture. So you have to look at it from different angles. To 
make sure you don't have these little white spots. This here is quite getting quite light in this area. So I think I'm even going to just thin down the paint a little bit more and just start filling in this a little bit more solid. And then I think I'll fill in, this is probably about our darkest color at the bottom here. In this area, this is our, probably our, our shadowest color in this area. Is that a word? Shadowest? <laughs> and then in here, it's a bit black, sort of browner. Or a duller, it's not quite as right so I've just worked in a little bit more of the the brown into that and as before make sure you get into all the little texture nooks and crannies and things Awesome. So here we have lots of texture. So now that you've got your, your bottom bits in there, now you can come in very carefully or very gently just over the top of those guys. And all you're doing is just painting the, the top of each groove and not the inside. See ya, Pat Mini. Thanks for joining us. Very gently over these tops. So that you're letting this texture that you've created do a lot of the work for you. Yeah, that's cool. One or two more dabs and dashes around here, just for, for detail. There's maybe add one or two little highlighty ones in this vicinity here as well. So that's just the orange with some white in it. I suppose we can even use that yellow. It's just these extra colors now add extra extra details. That's cool. And now it's probably a good time to go over and start doing that blue on the on the back. So I'll start with that original blue that we mixed. Let's fill in all of this. Again, make sure you get into all this texture that you've created. OK, 
come at it from all sorts of different angles. Coming here right into that texture over there, so that into that overlapped bit. Okay, over here, let's get our knife for a mask. So like here, this overlaps that. So I'm putting my knife in there and I'm painting inside there so that if you look at this guy from the side, underneath, you can I'm painting sort of the underneath of that texture over there as well. If you're using your knife for a mask like I am now, just every time you move your, your knife, just give it a wipe on some kitchen towel or your cloth, just so that it now picks up paint on the on the ridge there. So if you can put it back down again, it, it leaves a new it leaves a mark. So every time you move it, just clean it. Looks like I've got everything. Just down here, there's a little bit of blue over there. So while I've got the blue on the brush, I may as well tackle this little piece here too. Awesome. So here, that's sort of picking up quite a bit of sunlight over there, but it does seem to be becoming, ironically, more brown. So I'm going to pick up some of the brown that we used on the there on the chest. And remember, this is now all over the top work. So make sure you're not getting into those grooves of yours. I'm going to lighten it up ever so slightly, and so I'm just working in a bit of sky color into that. I 
Again, it's just a quick impromptu color. And as I put it on, he's now a bit lighter than he needs to be, and that's good because he's going to darken up as he dries. You can see it happening already, eh? Right, that's getting us some nice texture over there. Okay, wash the brush back to some blue. Let's get this edge here nice and nice and sharp. So I'm going to take some of this blue, and same as what we did over there, I'm getting some of this blue into these little ridges here. Not everywhere, because otherwise you're just pushing the line back, but I'm getting some of it into those ridges over there. So in other words, some of the ridges are brown, some of the ridges are now blue. And now we pick up some of the brown and come over the top. There you go. Now we've got some overlapping happening over there. Fab. Let's tackle that. So I'll go to the to the lighter blue again. Yeah, I think I'll stick with the same brush for now. And let's see. At the top there, there's also a bit of lighting effects and stuff happening. So I think I'll leave that. And here, I'm just going to use like little flicks. This brush is too, too big. So let's rather go to a, a smaller f fine round. It's almost like little fan shapes. Don't try and get these guys in exactly the same places on the photo. Just do your own thing. As long as you follow that, you see there's a bit of a like a rounded effect over there, rounded effect, rounded effect. So it's like what would you call it? Like rings. As long as you get that type of effect, you, you, you're okay. So what I'll usually just look for is, is just to get the size more or less the more or less similar. Yeah, it seems to be sort of going back up again. And then there's a little individual marks over here. Okay, yeah, 
let's go for the next bunch, the next row. So it's a little bit more higgledy piggledy, so I'm not gonna be as accurate either. And one last bunch of here. So now we're already getting to that, that rounding. The texture, the rounding of the texture. Okay, so over here. Here we're starting to get longer, straighter feathers here on the back. So I'm going to start adding just little lines over there. The same is happening over here. And here we're starting to see just a few little the ends of feathers right on this edge. So I'm just adding that little because we've now already worked in the edge. So I'm just adding those little roundings on that physical edge that we've that we've got there. All right, so now we want to add just a few little extra details in between this. So what I'm going to do is just take the paint that I'm busy with and the darker paint and just mix an in-between one, a half tone. And I'm going to use that and just add a few little lighter lines. I may even go over to a thinner brush. I'm going to try this little, can you see there, really thin little fine liner. Let's see how he works. So now I'm just adding little half tone flicks and things just to suggest some other feathers in between. In other words, what it's doing is, uh, what we did initially was get the um, the markings, and now we're adding texture, painted texture. You can see how quick it goes, just a few little suggestions of details, because the markings are the ones that you're actually looking at. It's nice to have just some detail in between that as well when you're standing back. Right, so as we get to here, things are starting to go more reflective. So I'm picking up some sky color. I haven't bothered washing the brush. That's fine. Because over here in this vicinity, or here on the back, that's quite... quite a bold reflection over there. So I'm blocking that in quite solid. But then as it comes to the end, now I'm flicking it out. I 
and they'll gradually start working in more and more of the the feather color. So what's happening there then now is you're basically getting like a bit of a shading. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Our, our sun is coming from this, from right to left. Okay, so Adam's asking, uh, there are so many acrylic mediums, which one do I use? the most and what about slow drying retarders or gloss gel mediums um, I'll be honest with you I I use plain old H2O most of the time just to thin down the paints um, occasionally when I want the the paint to dry slower um, when I'm doing lots and I'll do that when I'm doing like animals and I need lots and lots of lines so I can't be adding um, water every two seconds to to adjust the paint then I'll, I'll add some uh, then I'll add some painting retarder in there but that's that's all I use really I think I'm gonna add just I don't know if I should add more or just make these a little bit larger I think I'll start by making them a little bit larger just to make sure that they it fills up a bit more. And then I'm going to lighten it up. So I'll take some white into the paint. Just to mix a, a lighter version. Because we cannot see inside of these things, there's, there's here and there, there's a little highlight. So let's do that. Add a little highlight onto those those guys. So just remember these little highlights are now going to darken up. So just bear that in mind as you as you paint them. They may look a little bit bright initially. That's cool. And then while we've got this color, yeah, we add that rib defect. So you want to now carefully just go along each of those ribs and just highlight the tops. Let me demonstrate that. You've now added ridges over there, and those ridges are lying like this. So what you want to highlight is just the top of that ridge, so that the bottom bit stays dark, but the inside bits. And that's how it's now going to look, as though you've got individual feathers there. Same with this guy, while we add it, just these the outside edge is lighter, so I'm just working that in. It does seem like a little bit of a shading over there. So very roughly shade that guy over there. Alrighty. Okay, let's do that. I'm still seeing more orangey kind of colors in here than, than what's on mine. I know it doesn't matter, they do differ in color. So I'm going to take just a little bit of 
literally neat orange maybe bringing a bit of yellow into that just to lighten it up a tad I'm just going to bring some more oranges in in here very quickly over the tops just in places that's what's nice you can really do quick little color changes not a problem Yeah, that's definitely better. Let's now just add a bit of extra color into that area there. So what I'm going to do now is let's tackle this piece over here. So I'll just have to adjust the camera here. So we're nearly done. Okay, all right, so we need to block in this, and we need to block in this, and we need to block in that. So the darkest color I'm seeing there is sort of a mixture between this bright orange from the body and some of the dark brown from the body, something like that. So I'm going to take this and I'll make sure I get it inside those uh, textures over here because here we built up the texture quite quite high because we wanted these these feathers to stand up. So there's, l there's quite a lot of depth to that. So now remember to check it from all sorts of different angles. So you don't have little white bits sticking out. And if you need to, when it's really thick like this, you can even thin down your paint so that the water or the paint because it's runny, it runs down in there. So just keep looking at it from all sorts of different angles. Okay, and this one over here. Yes, that's the end of our 
end of our bird. It's all got paint on it now. Great. Okay, so here I'm just going to work in a few little contrasts and so on. For example, here it's darker over here, so I'm going to work some of the, the darker brown in there. To get that depth. Here's a very dark brown, so I'm going to use that very dark brown that we mixed. There and there. darker in here because that is casting a shadow in this area there and it's darker here for the same reason it's there's a shadow being cast there okay and I'm going to use a finer brush just let's see we've got some darker little individual feathers over here so then we'll have to paint so I'm getting that dark inside the um, inside the texture and now we can use the lighter over the top to bring out that detail. And the same over here. So we've now worked in the dark into the texture. So now we need to work the light over the top so that you can see that texture. Let's go even lighter. Especially over here, because this area is now in sun. Very gently. So just remember that is no light, but it will darken up as the as the paint dries. Okay, let's see where else do we need detail. Let's get some details in here. So here I'm just painting a feather effect. Using the same dabs and dash kind of technique as what we did further up on the chest. Here we've got those guys. They more of a actually more of a grey brown. So I'm going to take some paints grey into this dark guy over here, and then a bit of white into it. That'll give us quite a dull, a dull brown. So I'm making sure getting that well into the into the texture there, and we can just light it up. and just get it on those top edges there again. Oh, 
Alrighty, so let's go to there and get an overall view. So we're nearly done, eh? Let's get this this sorted. So I'm just setting up the camera for that guy. So for that, it's quite a quite a grey brown. Yeah, I think let's let's use that bit over there. So for that I think we can we can use this as a base. That's already halfway there. And we're not gonna need all that sky colour, we know that one for for certain now. So let's see, I'll take some more of that, a bit of yellow ochre, a bit of bird sienna, maybe even a bit of blue. Let's chuck all that in there. Let's first see what is it giving us. So just a whole mishmash of colours there. Let's get some more yellow in it. It's definitely way too blue to green. More browns. Maybe I'll even just separate that so we don't end up with a ginormous big pile. I mean, in the day, I don't care if it's the same brown. As long as it's a tree brown, <laughs> that's good enough. <laughs> yeah, that seems it's actually reasonably close to be honest. I'm good at that. We can we can work with that. Awesome, let's go to there. And um this is quite rough. Remember, we really textured this one up. We didn't make him smooth like the, like on the photo. So this time I'm going to use a, a bristle brush with nice long hairs because we needed to get in there. And uh, also, we need to get, because we need to get well in there, I'm going to dip the brush in the water and then in the paint. And then I'll pick up paint. So in other words, this the paint that's on the brush is very watery. I needed to literally just flow into those those cracks there. But now, don't make your paint so paint watery that it's like runny. It must just be very thin, so that it can flow in there when you go over it, but not so watery that it will run past where you're painting. Use a knife. It's not going to be not be that easy with a knife. I think I'm, I'll be happy just going straight up to the edge very carefully, because we've made this edge. It's not straight. It's, it's very ragged, ragged and jagged. If you go over the the feet, don't worry too much about it. It's going to be very difficult not to. That edge over there, the top, it's now broken broken off, so we've got to change that colour there. And then here, 
this color, I'm just going to run it off the edge of the canvas because you don't know where the frame is going to end. So you don't want to have a random white bit sticking through in case the in case the frame doesn't fully cover what you've left there. You've probably left more than more than what the frame is going to make or cover. So at least then it's the same color. Fabulous. Now let's take some of this color that we've mixed. I'm going to add some white. Maybe some more yellow ochre into that. Maybe even a, just a touch of yellow. Why not? Let's see what do we get. That seems to be sort of a, still sort of a tree kind of color. <laughs> so we'll use some of that. Clean the knife so that we can use him as a mask. Okay, so this is very jagged again. So you're gonna have to just be really careful. Clean your knife often. I've got a cloth here on my on my lap, which every now and again I'm just wiping the the knife off on. Alrighty, so let's now go and add a few extra colors here just for, for interest. Because for a start, we've got the light coming from the right to the left. So this here needs to go lighter, and that needs to go darker. So let's see, I'm going to take this base color for the um tree i'm gonna add some more paints gray into it to get a darker version let's see just to that it's not totally dead let's bring in a little bit of burnt sienna as well not too much it mustn't be brown like the bird Maybe a bit of yellow work or two. Just so that it's not a dead, fully dead grey. Right. Yeah, that's maybe, it's quite a big area, so I'm going to use this brush over here. Just a soft full bit. So I'll pick up some of that paint. So now notice that the in initial layer of paint is thinner. Because you wanted to get into the texture, right? But the, after that, you, you're working on the tops of the texture. So now you 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 can have your paint thicker. So I'm going to just come in here and I'm just going to drag this gently over there. Nice little shading happening over there. I'm going to use just maybe almost neat Payne's Grey, just on this far edge of here. Just a few little dabs and taps, just to get this area looking even darker. I 
like that. Now I'm going to take some white into this original color we've got over here. To mix a lighter version of that. And now our bird is casting a shadow over there. So don't go there, just around here. We start dragging this over here. And this is now giving us our, our highlight on this tree. Just over the tops, very gentle. Just to run over here and then just make it stop. Less and less and less. <laughs> Aram is saying the tree brown should be a, a pre-mixed color in a tube. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> tree brown is standard, eh? They all, all, all trees look the same color, don't they? <laughs> I wish, if any, that was possible. Alrighty, so there we got to get that really dark. So I'm going to literally go in there with my Payne's Gray. Just a tiny touch of that initial color over there in it. Let's get this nice and dark so that we can get our, our sunlight effect on that. And I'm going into the, I'm, I'm okay going into the texture there a bit. Let's get rid of all any lights over there. Because what's going to happen here, and yeah, I'm just, sorry, let me just finish one sentence. Let's get it nice and dark there into the texture and fade it out like that so that it's a, a shading. Now we're going to take this darker color that we've got over there. And that's going to become the highlight in this area of here. So run that over very lightly over that texture. If that's not visible, you can use your original tree color, a little bit of that. Not too much. You want to keep that area dark and that, that shadow true. Awesome. So now we've got a nice rounded tree there. What we can do now is just work on this over here. So I'm going to take this color because I'm done with him and I'm going to just modify him. So it's not quite the same. The inside of the broken bits of the tree you can see on the pictures, not quite the same. So I'll add, let's say, some more white to it. Maybe a bit of cadmium yellow and maybe a bit of Yellow ochre. Just that I'm, I'm running around here with a new color. Just got to be careful I don't get blue in mine with my palette being so full now. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just comparing it to all the previous three colors that I've used, making sure it's different. So we'll pick up some of this. And let's work him in on in places. And again, it's just over those tops and stuff. Rough edges. Little pieces maybe a bit more solid, other pieces just dabs and taps like that. And let's see, maybe he has a little piece that's Maybe we were picking out little pieces, so let's do that. Get this into those little pieces that we picked out. And of course, there's nothing stopping you from uh, going into one or two other little areas, bringing your own little finer lines as well. Oh, 
Alrighty, so what's left? A bird's ugly legs. <laughs> That's quite a quite an orangey kind of colour there, right? Eh? So I'm gonna take some orange. And I'm just I'm just using whatever's on the palette now. I'm, I'm just winging these things. Because you obviously just for a leg, you don't wanna be mixing anything funny now. It's too late in the game. So I'm carefully making sure I get all the way into these little roundings of the legs. That side is a bit darker, so we can even use some some brown into the orange. So here, I don't think I, I didn't bother doing the foot on that side. I said he's behind the out of out of view. So I've just got a bit of a leg over here. Get that dark. And now we've got a shadow. So I'll just take whatever dark browns I've got here. Let's darken up that edge over there. Some over here, inside there. And over there. And then just a touch of Payne's Grey for the nails. And then a bit of the dark, this little shadow that we've used, make sure you get it in underneath, inside there, just so that that foot Cast a shadow. And let's see, maybe we can add just a tiny highlight onto just on that one one leg over there. So it's a bit more yellowy, yellowy orange. So we'll just drag that in over there, that in over there. The the legs are, are really quite textured so don't worry too much about getting all sorts of just really rough Aram is asking is would you call this mixed media yeah definitely because you've now you have now used the texture paste it's not in, in in my books, it's not the m true mixed media. Mixed media is normally when you're using different types of paint, like for example, oil and, and acrylic together in the same in the same artwork. But for for as far as for all intents and purposes, yes, it would be mixed media because you've used not just paint. All right, so I'm going to chuck that over there and just give it a, a quick little once over and see if there's anything that I've missed or anything that can be can be improved. So what I do see is over here, this is a little bit light. I'm going to literally use some Payne's Gray and just go a light little color wash over this just to get that little bit of a shading right over there. And then this over here can also go a little bit lighter. Because we now used quite a bit of lights in over there. And these guys tie into each other. So I'm just getting tie in between what we've done here and what we've done there. Because what we did was not the same thing. It's always good to go over your, your final artwork. Often I'll leave it for a day. That's also a nice way of, of doing that. You just leave it for a day. 
Because then you come back tomorrow and you look at this out of new eyes. Because when you're painting, you, you get sort of bogged down with little details that you're busy with. And you don't see the bigger picture. That's cool over there. And I think this here can go just a little bit darker. Just to get a little bit more rounding over there. Cool. And then this back area of the of the wing, can you see, is also overall brighter. That's so that's telling me the blue that I've used there. Remember, we put extra little um, texture in over there. We're using a mid tone in in this area. There, I've had to darken it, and here I've used the mid tone. So here, I can use more of these lighter guys. So yes, some of these um, little detail bits that we, we, we spend a while putting in may disappear in the process, but that doesn't matter. That's just the way it is. That's the way it is now on the on the bird, and that's simply because of the, the lighting. It's getting more light over here because the sun is coming from the right. So we have to lighten this whole area up. And as it curls around, it's gradually getting darker and darker. So that's uh, what we do. See there, now we've got a bit of rounding, eh? Always going to do these little fine tunings at the end. Alrighty, and then here on the top of the head, I think we can also put on some of these little brighter bits. I know we did put brighter bits, but they I don't think they're quite bright enough. They've dulled themselves down now. So we put some of those little lighter guys that we added in over there. Add some of them in over here too. Yeah, that's fine. I'm happy with that. And then finally, touch of white, just to brighten up this little reflection in the in the eye there. Yeah, then I think let's let's call it a day on that guy. So otherwise, what happens is now we're gonna we'll, we'll start fiddling and fiddling too much. <laughs> we can darken up this just to get a little bit more of a rounding over here. There we go. That's given us a bit more, a bit more sun in that area there.
Yeah, I think let's go to there. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Good luck painting your uh, your Kingfisher and doing the texture. I'll see you next time. Guys, thanks for joining me in the live class. I hope you enjoyed that. You must have yourself a wonderful weekend. I'll see you next week. We're going to be doing some drawing again next week. Take care.